All right, everyone. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different than my usual um, videos. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more serious. I want to take some time to uh, kind of express something that I've been dealing with for about a year now. Um, and if you're a new father um, and you've gone through sort of similar experiences as I have, uh, hopefully you'll see this video and uh, maybe you'll uh, get something from it. Um, maybe glean some knowledge from what I have to say. Uh, if you're going to be a new father or are a new father, this might help you as well. Um, so, as some of you may or may not know, um, about one year ago, um, my first daughter was born. And uh, I say first because my wife and I want to have a big family. Um, so, first daughter was born. We knew at about week 22 that she had a uh, complication with her heart. Um, she was, uh, she had developed with a condition called hypoplastic left heart, which uh, you have four chambers of your heart, right and left side. The hypoplastic refers to the uh, uh, development of one side, the elasticity um, being reduced, and so one side grew larger and developed properly, and one side did not. The left side, it was the problem side. Um, the left side of your heart, the chambers on the left side of your heart deal with pumping blood out to the body. The right side deals with pu pumping blood to the lungs um, to reoxygenate the blood. So the issue with her hypoplastic left heart was that she wasn't getting adequate blood flow out to the body. Um, and so she had to undergo a number of uh, open heart surgeries, um, two of them to be exact. One approximately a week after she was born. Um, she was in an intensive care right from the time she was delivered, which she was full term. There was no premature issues or anything like that. Um, she was given over to an intensive care team and put in a, a uh, kind of an intubator to keep her warm. And, and uh, um, unfortunately, we weren't able to do much skin to skin contact. Um, that's a very important thing for new babies. Um, and uh, with her, it just couldn't happen because we had to make sure that she was stable and um, out of the womb, she was much more vulnerable than she was when she was in the womb. Uh, fortunately, she was full term. My wife exercised the entire pregnancy. She ate correctly. Um, the baby was very, very strong. Now, the night before, um, my wife delivered, um, we were sort of told some news, um, there was a possibility of, um, a condition, uh, that basically is, a, uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what it is, um, basically what the condition was, was a, they were seeing in the echocardiographs buildup of, uh, I mean, the ultrasounds buildup around the uh, lungs of our baby and what that could be uh, was a condition called lymphangiectasia and I, f I remembered it. Lymphangiectasia is pretty much lethal, um, it's very deadly and uh, um, so what we were told was if your daughter comes out blue and not breathing or choking um, it's a pretty bad sign and it's pretty much she's got lymphangiectasia. Um, on the other hand, if she comes out looking like a normal baby and kicking and screaming, she's in the clear. So we spent the whole night before my wife gave birth, at least I did, preparing to bury my daughter. Um, I was pretty much convinced that I was going to have to bury my child. So, um, Moving forward, baby was born pink, healthy, screaming and kicking, totally wonderful, had hair on her head. Um, it was an excellent delivery. Uh, so fast forward a week and uh, she has to undergo her first open heart surgery. Um, and they deliberate on what was 
it's called a Norwood. Now, uh, that's a f medical term. You can look it up if you want. Um, basically, it has to do with uh, starting to reroute the plumbing of her heart. Um, got your aorta, which pumps blood out to the body, and your pulmonaries, which go to the lungs. There were some issues with those arteries that they had to deal with. Um, and so uh, she went through these this surgery, and, and uh, it was successful. Um, I have a few pictures here. Um, for any new dads who are experiencing medical issues with their children, you really have to prepare yourself for witnessing horrors. Um, it's the best way I can describe it. You have to be ready to face your worst nightmare, which is your children looking like science experiments. Um, this is her... She had her chest still open after the open heart surgery, um, or open chest surgery, basically. Um, this is her. Um, she, she was awake, and uh, I don't know if you can make out much detail, but that's basically what she looked like um, for about two weeks. Um, You have to uh, realize that everything that's being done for your children is for the best. Uh, so they were able to close her chest up. There was severe swelling of her organs after the procedure. They kept her chest open and she sat like that for a number of days. And uh, so um, this was her after they closed her chest. I don't know if you can see her scar there. Um, uh, she's a total fighter, um, really did well. Um, there were some issues with weaning off morphine because they give the little babies morphine who go through these major procedures. So we had a little bit of an issue with her becoming stressed and her heart rates going up. Um, they had to deal with her oxygen saturations of her blood regulating themselves without any kind of medicine or help from um, machines. Um, a month and a half later she was able to go home with my wife and me and uh, so she was pretty much a miserable little baby for about the next three months. Um, she cried every night. There was nothing. We had to have a pulse oximeter on her to keep a track of while she was asleep, her oxygen saturations, make sure, making sure she was breathing correctly. We had to do all of these things, constantly monitoring her. We'd take shifts. Uh, I was working. Um, the whole time my wife was with the baby at the hospital for that first month, I had to go back and work. So I only saw them on weekends and uh, it was a pretty harrowing time. Coming back to home, um, we, we had to deal with the baby 24-7, making sure she was stable and, and able to, you know, uh, keep keep her heart rate correct and her oxygen saturations correct, her breathing right, and uh, so fast forward three months, she has to go in and basically get a second surgery. Um, I think it's the, uh, either the Glen or the Fontaine for, it was the second surgery, I think it's the Glen. Um, so she goes through that and uh, kind of looks the same as the first picture. Um, pretty much the same kind of story, just kind of weaning her off all the stabilizing medications, all the pain meds. And uh, I had to go, of course, back to work that whole, whole month. My wife was there with her at the Children's Hospital. Um, as a father, 
uh, if you are in a similar situation, I would I, I was two hours away from the hosp the children's hospital where she she and my wife were staying. Um, so as a father, you have to be able to consign yourself if you are working, you have to square yourself away with not being around your wife and your vulnerable child. You have to be able to do that. Um, so fast forward another month after her fourth month and she she was able to, she was stable enough and, and able to come home. She passed some a lot of the physical exams and uh, she was able to do things. Um, one thing I will say going back to her f birth, um, when she was born, she was crying and you know pink and all that. The first thing she did when they laid her on my wife's chest was look at me, because I was on the left side of my wife. She looked at me and grabbed my finger. And uh, the whole time these two surgeries were taking place, the two giant gaps of my life that I missed out on seeing my daughter and my wife. I thought of that moment where I saw my wife, I saw my baby, and my baby grabbed my finger and stared me straight in the eye. Um, as a man, you have to hold on to those little moments and keep those in your heart and not let yourself become bitter. Um, because there were several times where I would come home and uh, I would just break down and, and, and I threw stuff. I, I punched through my door one time. Um, it was a really rough time when my wife was away uh, tending to our, our child. Um, our baby was able to come home uh, and she, she, this, after the second surgery, she was no longer a miserable child. She slept like a rock. She still sleeps like a rock at night. Um, She's one year old now, and her hair is so long. She smiles all the time. Um, her scar, her she has about two dozen punctured marks and a big chest scar. And everything is receding and, and kind of diminishing and, and its effect on her body. It's no, nothing's pink anymore. She, it just looks like a old scar um, f foolishly one of my fears was because of that scar I was afraid as she would age um, that she would not be able to produce breast milk if she chose to have children that was a fear that I didn't have to have she, she'll have no formational issues with her upper body it, it'll be all fine um, it's little things like that information that for me as a father really helps me. So if you have any questions about will she be able to develop normally? Will your baby be able to live a normal healthy life after this? You need to answer, have those answer, questions answered thoroughly because it will eat away at you. Um, when I didn't have those answers for whatever reason, I was up all night thinking about it. So make sure you know what to ask and what the answers are. Um, with her condition and the way she's got her heart set up now, it's a two chamber heart instead of a four chamber heart. So they're using the two sides of her heart, but they're basically using her entire heart as one pump unit and her lungs as the other pump unit. Um, and it's just taking one step out of the um, circulatory system. Um, she's getting to the point where she's starting to want to cross. Her development isn't where it should be. Um, you need to be prepared for that, especially. I've given up any kind of expectation of where normal babies are and, and realized that because she spent so much time on her back, with a breathing tube sho shoved in her mouth, down her throat, and stuff sticking into her stomach. She has an aversion to eating and um, uh, several 
large body function motor skill type things like um, she's just now at one years old starting to want to get into a crawling position and, and trying to crawl um, she is able to pull herself up assisted like so that she doesn't fall down when we stand her by the couch we made sure to get her in a Johnny jumper thing where she's suspended in a whole harness and she can jump made sure to do that right away when she got home so that she could get her leg strength up but because of her open chest her upper body strength wasn't where it should be so we've had to train her pushing herself up doing tummy time um, another thing with heart babies is tummy time the development of the back of the neck so that babies can push themselves up and start crawling that uh, is pushed back because of the issue with her, her the musculature in the front she's getting to the point now where she can start moving into more advanced stages of crawling or you know the uh, advanced stages of getting herself into all fours next step is crawling and then walking obviously but you really have to square away the fact that your child has um, needs that are very special um, you need to remember that everything takes time and you have a whole life to live don't worry about being behind on certain aspects of your child's development up here in her brain she's got no issues um, totally smart babbles talks right where she should be in her cognitive functions but her physical body um, while her legs are really really strong her arms and the ability to push have been uh, reduced from you know the surgical procedures so we're getting her into those we're getting into into that position so you you have to take each step slowly with a baby with a health condition. As far as her um, energy and her endurance, as far as I can tell, she's a normal energetic child. I don't see anything at this point of her being out of breath at all or uh, you know, slowing down during activities. Um, and I don't expect to in the future as she grows. Um, hypoplastic left heart kids can be athletes. Um, they can play soccer and do gymnastics and do most anything normal kids can do. Um, that has given me a lot of hope because there I know there are a lot of children who can't end up being athletes or do doing active lifestyles and I thank God and whatever powers that my daughter was gifted the ability to still stay active and live as a normal child um, as gruesome as this is the relief you feel from being able to know that your child is going to function normally in the world is far and away of much greater relief. Um, I have the utmost respect for parents uh, who have kids who have mobility issues and um, you know things with their child's uh, cognitive functions. Um, we were able to dodge that bullet and I am fully aware of that and I give thanks every single day. I make sure to make time to play with my baby when I get home from work. Um, I thank my wife for being such an amazing mother because that's the other thing. You really have to be able to give your wife the encouragement that she needs. Um, my wife is a 15 out of 10 awesome mother. She's an awesome wife, Ho excellent homemaker, I have no complaints about my wife. Um, I don't know how she did everything she was able to during the months where our baby was in the hospital. Um, see, for me, from my perspective, 
I would be away for a week, come during the weekends, and see my child in various stages of disrepair. What was surreal was the first month when she was totally sick and like a dissected frog and then all of a sudden a month and a half come around and hey time to take your baby home and it's like I was almost convinced that my child had died and was swapped with another child because the before and after from me being away so long was night and day so that's another thing if you can't be around your kids and your wife because you're working or you're not near the hospital and you have to tend to the house and work be prepared to miss out on a lot of development that happens during the hospital stay um, in some ways I'm glad I missed it because I don't know how my wife handles it but the memories I have of seeing my daughter in this state um, have driven me into a situation where I've actually for the last I've actually caught myself uh, recently just I zone out all I want to do is get on YouTube and spend my time just watching YouTube videos um, keeping my mind off things because I feel like I don't want to compare to a combat veteran but there is that element of I feel like my life changed both in an excellent way because I'm a father and and uh, but there's that part of me that I feel like my heart was broken and I don't I haven't been able to understand how to handle myself without a crutch like constant entertainment uh, from online. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any drugs. I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Um, I don't have a, a habit to fall back on. So for me, it was social media entertainment. And my wife has told me, you spend all your time on the phone on watching YouTube and stuff. And she's absolutely right. Um, I have had to come to grips with putting down the phone and facing my thoughts. Um, the, there were times when I could hold my daughter after this and kind of when she was in this state. Um, skin to skin is very important with babies. Touching your skin on their skin is very, very good for a, a newborn baby. And we tried to do that as much as possible. What with her opened up and new healing scar, it was very challenging for us to find those times. But I have nightmares of being in the hospital and holding my child like that. Oh. So I had to come to grips with the experience that I had of walking in that the walking in that place where life and death meet there were families whose kids didn't make it right near where my daughter's room was I walked in that place where life and death happen and I've tried to avoid thinking about it for months and months and it's now a year after and I, I'm making this so that if you are listening to me and you are a new dad who's in the hospital with something similar like this you can hopefully cope with it in a constructive and healthy way. Um, I don't recommend 
spent staying up all night, I recommend getting sleep. I don't recommend drinking heavily. I don't recommend taking up a bad habit that you'll regret later on. You need to be there as long as you can for your family, and that means not bi building bad habits. Um, I don't want to ramble anymore. Um, everything's good with my daughter. Um, she's she, I took her to, my wife and I took her to the park today and and she loves swinging on the swing set and uh, going down the slide I hold her as she goes down the slide and she claps and giggles and um, every day is a new miracle and nothing that's happened in the past is able to diminish how bright the future is because my daughter has survived two really potentially deadly medical procedures and come out the other side thriving. There are a lot of children who are not either able to fight or able to survive for whatever reason. They're not as well off to start biologically and uh, I know that and uh, it is the greatest joy of my life that my daughter was able to fight and survive and that my wife was there to smile at her and tell her everything was okay when I could not. If you're a new dad in the, and your family's in the hospital, you have to square yourself away and know that things will be all right if they go bad or if they go the right way. You have to understand that life, there are things that have to happen in your life and there are some things you can't help. But don't let yourself become defeated and don't use crutches like I did to keep your mind off things. You have to face your demons. You have to face down what has, what it bothers you the most. Otherwise, you won't be able to function properly as a man. There were several months in my life after my wife came home from the second time that I was square glued to my phone because I did not want to think about anything. I obviously, you know, was with her and helped do things and, and I obviously went to work, but in my free time, it was don't pay attention to anything. Just listen to entertainment. Listen to people on YouTube. Watch gun videos. Um, I got really big into firearms, uh, like way bigger than I always I had ever been. Um, use your stress constructively. Make sure you stay active and healthy, otherwise you won't be able to be a, a successful father. Um, and above all, find a way to deal with your with your emotional trauma because it will eat you and eat you and eat you until there's nothing left but a man standing in his room screaming his head off because he's so furious and angry and he doesn't know why he's so angry everything's okay but you're so furious and you don't know what to do make sure you can be in a headspace where you don't end up like that because I've punched right through square through my door out of nowhere I just was upset and I thought about something I had seen in the hospital and ran my fist right through the door. Make sure you can square yourself away as a man to handle the heavy loads that you will have to carry. Um, it really helps that when, when I see my daughter and my wife giggling and playing, you know, sitting together. My daughter has to eat through a, what's called a G-tube. Um, she, because of the tubes that were in her throat, 
um, she's created a, an aversion to actually accepting food through her mouth. So we've been slowly trying to get her to eat more and more through her mouth. It will take time, but eventually we'll, she will be able to eat like a normal person. Right now she eats through a tube in her stomach. Um, so when I see her sitting, getting her, her formula, and my wife's there playing peekaboo or something, it's a uh, joy I can't describe. Um, I get to come home and see that, and it fuels me every day. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up there. It's, it's like 30 minutes, but I didn't expect to talk this long. But please, if you're a new dad and you have a, a, a baby with a medical issue, keep calm make sure you have an outlet that is healthy for you to be able to express your frustrations because damaging your property or yourself is never a good option you need to be there for your kids and your wife or if you you know your girlfriend or whoever whoever your lady is um, life's too short to be miserable over memories over bad memories and I've had to come to grips with my bad memories um, a year later and I'm still struggling with what I've seen um, it really is hard to see your child in a in a state like that and not be able to do anything for them there's nothing you can do except give them to doctors and have the doctors handle the situation. I had a tough time with that fact. You have, So like I said, understand there are things that happen that are out of your control. Don't use crutches to get by. Make sure you are squared away. And if you need an outlet or help expressing what you're feeling or you're confused about certain things there's a network of people who have a similar situation going on or they've been there and they've done that never fear reaching out to those people um, I have a discord server uh, discord is an app where you can talk to people um, I will leave a link to that in the description for anybody who wants to join. If you're seeing this and you're dealing with a, a child who's got a medical condition and you're a new dad, feel free to join up on Discord, contact me, I will talk with you. I will become your brother if you have nobody else. Um, I was fortunate in that my dad and my mom and, and my own brother were there for me it, when I needed them and, and having a good family structure is important. So if you don't have that, if you feel like you're out on your own and you are dealing with this terrible situation, contact me if you can. Um, I uh, check my Discord regularly. Um, if I am not able to contact you right away, be patient, and I'll I'll uh, get to you. Uh, uh, that's all I have to say. Um, sorry if you were expecting some fun firearms-related video or something about goofy gingerbread men or whatever. But I've I had a little bit of a. Uh, Thing today where I was really struggling with uh, stress and so rather than take my stress out in a bad way I thought I would make a video and help anybody who's a new dad dealing with a medical issue of their children um, That's about all. Thank you for watching. I'm, again, I'm sorry for rambling, but um, 
to my new subscribers. This isn't the usual content. I usually do firearms related stuff. Um, but I had to make this video because I've been, I've been fucking miserable. Uh, thanks again. Talk to you later.